Hi guys, Ren and Computer Geek here. So, we're doing an unboxing-ish type video on this Duramax. It's a 23 horsepower with electric start, 713 cc. Now, we actually ended up with two of these. We're going to be working on two different repower projects pretty soon here. We we ran into a few issues, and. The reason why I chose the repowers that I did was because they were issues I knew you guys would run into if you chose to do them. So, it is pretty easy to do a repower that just uses a one inch shaft that comes out. And for the question, the shaft is three inches. Now, the problem is, everything we want to repower is on the flywheel side. Now, this does have a three bolt pattern that is on the flywheel, and I will be confirming whether that's the same as the Honda pattern and the same as the Predator 630, and then we'll go from there. Whoa, pause the video. This is not how I wanted the video to go, so I fired off about a $150 parts cannon so that we could find out some answers. Some of it worked out, some of it didn't work out. Let's talk about it. I got a hold of Performance 670. They said they didn't have an answer for whether it would fit this, but if the bolt pattern was the same as the Twin Cylinder Predator or the Liticon engines, that this hub here should fit. Now, this hub here is for the Predator, and this is an adapter for a Vanguard for the 14, 16, and 18 horsepower V-Twin Vanguard, and it lines up right on there perfectly. Now, this adapter uses coarse 5 16 and it bolts right up without any issues. So this is off of a Briggs & Stratton. This is the adapter that a Cub Cadet uses to hook up the shaft drive to the flywheel side. Now there's a quibble with this, but it's all fixable with a little bit of grinding. And the quibble is that on a Kohler, these are spaced just a tiny bit further apart, and they use a different thread type. So, if we get in there with a rat file, and we clean that up just a little bit, we can make that line up, get a couple of coarse threads, pop the coarse threads in there, and we should be good to go. So, the next question is, is it going to fit? I haven't tried it. We're going to do this for you guys. But, one more note we're going to add. These are generic Honda um, GX390 headers. As you can see, they bolt right up perfectly. But as you can see, one is tipped slightly sideways. That's because the bolt pattern on the back of this is just slightly kiddied to the top. So if you watch the stud there as I come down, see that stud is a little bit over to the side. No big deal. You know, some basic welding skills. You slice that off on the straightaway. You clock it a little bit and it would be good to go. So we have our adapters in order to be able to adapt to whatever exhaust system we decide to put on this. I'll include a link for these along with... If this works, I'll have a link for this in the description. Let's put you in a tripod and let's see if this fits. Now I already loosened these up in order to make it quick and easy for the video. It's also interesting to me that those don't have any kind of Loctite or anything on them. So, that side 
obviously is the one that goes out. This side should be the one that goes in. And let's see if it fits. So I guess this washer must have to come out of here. There was no instructions that came with this, so we're just making it up as we go. No, nope, I guess the washer's got to stay, which is going to be a pain in the neck to get it clocked. Well, let's see here. If we put that there, can we get that to go in? Not enough to get good threading. So we're going to have to work on that idea. We're going to have to buy longer bolts for this. But that's minor. Let's get these put in and see if this actually works at all. Well, lines up with the bolt pattern on the giant washer. That's a good sign. Now let's see if we can get it on here. There's one started. That feels like two started. That feels like three started. Yep, that bottomed out. So we definitely need some longer bolts or maybe we need to machine off the base of this because this is aluminum and it would only take a second to machine that base down so it's flat instead of because there's plenty of room. Let me grab the camera. So as you can see right there, there's a big giant space because apparently there must be something different between the way the Predator mounts up or not. But those are in, so I need to buy slightly longer version. But I think that's gonna work. So at this point, if I took this and I filed it just a little bit that would go on there like that and I should be able to get the shaft drive up and running now one thing I will note is that that's going to extend the shaft area which means the whole engine may have to be moved forward a little bit to make it fit and I'm not sure how well that's going to play with the idea of the deck engagement on this side from the electric PTO. But I might be able to flip the PTO around, which would make putting a new belt on a pain, but I don't know, we'll see. But now, continuing this video. Now there's a few long-term quirks I can see about the way this engine is set up that aren't exactly bad, but they're things to think on. So, I'm not a fan of fuel pumps being hidden inside the engine shroud. Kohler does this on a lot of its singles and stuff, and it causes a lot of problems in the long term for them. What I like is that Duramax took the time to put the fuel pump behind that shroud. So you can access this fuel pump, but if you didn't know it was there and you were having ongoing carburetor issues and stuff like that, it would be kind of a pain. The other problem is if you're driving things off the flywheel, which are what a lot of twins and stuff do, then this is all going to be up against an engine backing plate area in the machine and not accessible. So plan ahead on that for your future, because these do tend to fail. Ethanol tends to eat the diaphragms out of them. I do like the way the intake runs. It is a double barrel carburetor. A lot of people have said that the carburetor is replaceable with a 670 Honda, because this carburetor is off of a generator assembly. So the idle jets are not tunable on most of these. But you can get the GX670, which should bolt up, and that has tunable idle jets. Now, on this wiring harness over here, I like the fact that it's got all these disconnects and stuff. 
I would love it if it was one solid plug, especially if they converted this system over to using the standard six pin plug that a lot of lawn tractors and stuff use because it would make conversions using this engine much easier. But there is so much meat here on this harness that once you identify what's what, you can easily cut it off and adapt it to a standard six pin plug. So I like that. I like the starter being accessible. I like the fact that the oil is easy to get to. Not quite a fan of like how close it is in here, but you're supposed to check your engine when it's cold anyway. This is all accessible. This makes me long-term use cautious. That's not very far above the top of that, so I'm curious what it'll be like in long-term. Overall, I think it's a great little engine. I can't wait to stuff it in a machine along with the other one that they sent. But what I'd also like to do is a lot of you, I posted up a picture on Facebook in several groups, and all of you gave me certain specs you would really like to know about the size and dimensions of this engine. So Jesse's going to walk around with the camera, and we're going to discuss those specs. The first spec is the front here to the flywheel center, which matters if you're driving off the flywheel. So we're at about five to five and a quarter there. The other issue that everybody has is what is the overall height of the entire engine? The answer to that is 18, including the throttle over here, which you will probably relocate. Now the width of the engine, based on whether you're leaving the key ignition where it is or not, is the width of the starter across to this oil cooler here, which is roughly somewhere around 19 to 20 inches on width. Now on the back side, you're going to have your crank, which is the same idea. It's going to be basically about five and a quarter to the center. And from the center to the top is going to be the same 13 to 14 inches as before. It has multiple different bolt patterns that are listed all over the back. And this is documented extremely well by Duramax and you can pull up all the information. Your throttle connects here. Your starter is going to be down here. So you're going to have your positive from your battery coming into right here. And when you turn your key, this gets positive to trigger your solenoid and fire the whole thing. Now, if we come around to the front, we have this air filter. And you can order these parts directly from Duromax. I'll post in the link a description Sorry, in the description I will post a link for you to be able to call Duramax and order these directly. Duramax is working on their website and setting up to be able to order directly from Duramax's website. Hopefully that will be out soon. I've been working with them on getting this system so it's more user friendly for the repower. So if you have any ideas that Duramax needs to hear about, please post them in the comments down below. Now the other thing I wanted to point out is this is our choke here on the front. And it actually uses a bar to connect all the way to the rear here. Now one thing I like is that Duramax included this, which means that you could put a remote choke quite easily to there if you can't get to the front of the engine. And there's our throttle right there, which easily can be adapted to a remote throttle. All right. Now the one big thing that got asked in all of the Facebook posts was, if I could compare the height of this, that five and a quarter inches, along with the width of this unit, which is about 13 inches, to most of your common engines that you would be repowering 
in things like a Craftsman GT with an 18 horsepower Briggs Opie, or something like a Cub Cadet with a 19 horsepower um, V-Twin in it, or something like repowering a Cub Cadet with a Vanny that has a 18 horsepower or a 16 horsepower in it. So we're going to run around and compare that five and a quarter and 13 inch mark to a few other engines that we have on the property that you might want to replace. First on the list, we got an 18 horsepower Vanny. These are about the same size for the 18 and the 16. As far as the width goes on the Vanny, if we're going by the case width, it's about 11. If we're going by general flywheel, about 12. So about an inch thinner. Now if we come over here and we look at the crank, we're right about at five and a quarter on there. So replacing the Vanny with the Duramax really should be pretty much a drop in. The problem being a Vanny on its flywheel is a two bolt system going into it. So we'd have to figure out an adapter for that. Let's take a look at another engine. Hi, so this is a Kohler Command 18. As you can see, blatantly it came out of a Cub Cadet with a shaft drive. Now the thing about these is that even though they're an 18, they're quite large and they're very heavy. So if we go from the case backing to the front where the front shroud would be, we're at about 13 inches quite easily. Now the other thing about these Kohlers is that the shaft drive units use a two bolt system and that's where a lot of these Kohlers are set up is for driving hydro drives and things like that. So yet again we'd have to figure out some sort of two bolt to three bolt adapter. The other thing that we would need to consider is if we're talking about the drive shaft on one of these Kohlers a lot of these like this one are actually an inch and an eighth as you can see right there. So we'd have to use some sort of adapter, different pulley, different hub, different something to replace these Kohlers. This is one of the Kohlers that I will probably be replacing in a Cub Cadet. Alright, this unit here is probably the first one I will be trying to repower because it should be the simplest one to do. Should be. Now, this is an 18 horsepower opposed twin Briggs. And if we open it up, we're going to see what we were talking about earlier. The drive pulley system for this is on the flywheel side of the machine, and we will have to be coming up with some sort of workaround for this. Now, obviously, with this engine bay, I really can't get into it much, but luckily we have another engine bay we can get into. Oh, there we are. We got an OP there that we can get an easier measurement on. This one is a 16, but the 18s are basically about the same size. The thing about these, when they're like this, is oftentimes that exhaust is set up as part of the shroud. So that makes the whole thing almost 15 inches or so to the flywheel side of things. Now, the other thing about these is that the shaft is at a little over six and a half inches from the bottom. So it's a little bit taller than our Duramax. Yep, you're right. The one in the background probably is the one we're going to be working on. That also has a Kohler in it, but it happens to go and be a 12.5 horsepower or a 16 or something underpowered that never really should have been in there. Now, I need to get back on this project and finish up a few things. The Duramax that's in this is an electric start. Right now it's pull start driving this Sears. And we're going to go and finish this up as the next video. And then we'll probably start working on getting the twin into something. Have fun. Thank you for watching.